for our first week, we're going to talk about the endocrine system. We've already done a good chunk of this chapter and some really important stuff. So you'll need to review hormones, hormone actions and types, um, and a few of the endocrine organs that we've talked about, pancreas, parathyroid being the main two. Um, I'll talk in the next slide here, which organs we're gonna focus on this week. A few of the ones we talked about last semester will come up again. So pancreas we'll mention when we get to it with digestive system. So this week we'll really be focused on a more complex type of endocrine signaling, which is um, the hypothalamic um, pituitary axes. That's what we didn't do really any of in the fall. So first let's start by reviewing our endocrine glands. What are we talking about with endocrine? First of all, remember endocrine glands, what does this mean? This means anything that produces hormone, hormone producing glands. There are hormones produce um, various other placing, places in your body. So your skin, your kidneys, and we'll see that this semester, we'll look at the kidneys and see the hormones produced within the kidneys. Um, but endocrine glands mean the main function is, is endocrine. So um, we did some of these last semester. And actually, let me first, I'm going to label in this black the ones we did last semester. So pineal gland produces melatonin. Um, we did talk about the thyroid some. We'll do it again this semester. So I'll actually have to add my second color for that. Parathyroid. Um, and then we did pancreas. Now, we also saw the gonads in lab. So hopefully you do, um, you know, know the names of more of these. We went over all of them, but the ones we didn't um, cover much in detail, we will this semester. So up here, we've got the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is part of the brain, right? We did actually talk about that in terms of part of the brain, but now we're gonna talk about it in terms of it re regulating endocrine function. It is closely connected to the pituitary gland. Pituitary, I did not spell that right. And you actually saw that some in lab will look more closely um, this week and look at that connection there. So this is actually gonna be kind of like a main part. Um, this system regulates then the thyroid and the adrenal glands. All right, so those are our main endocrine structures we will talk about. Um, other ones that are here, so we are going to talk about the reproductive glands um, next week. So a whole section on reproductive system, ovaries and testes. We will mention them this week. So the hypothalamic pituitary system also regulates them. So we'll see, we'll see that. Um, and then the last one here that I haven't labeled, right? I think it's only one, is the thymus, which is a, um, also has immune function. So it will come up briefly with immune system. Otherwise, um, won't talk about it in terms of endocrine. Okay, and again, we will see hormones produced from the heart, um, the intestines, the kidneys, blood vessels as well, um, but these are the endocrine organs. So like I said, we're gonna be starting with and actually focusing on this shebang here, which is then going to be regulating thyroid, adrenal, and gonads. So we can kind of, um, in that framework, learn about those other three. So let me zoom in once to show you a zoomed in picture of this, and then we will go into um, more detail on it. So here is the hypothalamus, remember part of the brain. 
but has special neurons that control the pituitary. Um, anterior and posterior pituitary are going to be very important um, because they have different functions. The anterior pituitary um, is, is actually endocrine tissue, whereas the posterior pituitary is neural tissue. So kind of, kind of cool. Um, and you remember the hypothalamus, it is involved in the stress response. We talked a little bit about its role in autonomic control, right? So the autonomic nervous system and maintaining homeostasis. And so one more thing I wanna show you in this first video is a really nice way to kinda see what the hypothalamus does. So if you have a stressor, what we talked about in the fall was the hypothalamus can control um, the autonomic nervous system and cause release of hormones from the adrenal medulla, but also actually directly from the spinal cord, it could directly control the heart, right? So it's it like increase heart rate. And this is our nervous system, right? Here's our spinal cord even though this ends up actually being hormone here. So this was part of our autonomic nervous system. So I actually can autonomic. Well, the hypothalamus is an integrator, right? It also has a response that's a longer term stress response. So um, this system here, this is a hormone. This is, okay, well, there we go. This is a hormone released from the pituitary, anterior pituitary, and these are hormones, steroid hormones, cortisol is one of these that are also involved in the stress response. And this is a slower stress response. Um, so stress response is a really cool example of nervous versus endocrine um, in terms of speed of the two, but also overlap of the response, a coordinated response of your body to respond both quickly to running from a bear, but also um, longer term in terms of addressing, um, correcting for metabolic demands that have been met and also have implications for like long-term stress can be detrimental, right? And that's um, another consequence and important thing about understanding stress responses is long-term stress when you're not running from a bear every day, but you kind of think you are um, because your professor makes you study too much, um, that can be detrimental. Okay, so this week we'll really be focused on this idea here, this kind of framework, not just the stress response, but the hypothalamus being an integrator that then coordinates body functions through the pituitary gland function. One of my favorite topics.